Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here, and today we will be covering the lore of the planets in the solar system of Signalis, as well as what little lore we know about each of them. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. Starting off with the first inhabited planet closest to the sun, we have Boyon, home to the Imperial Palace which floats above the planet's poisonous clouds. Boyon is the capital of the Empire, as mentioned in a couple of notes. First, as one of the dreams held by the Dreamer, which reads as follows. 19th Night I saw an eye in the sky above the clouds of Boyon. I was walking through the floating imperial palace when the gaze of the sunlight iris burned my body to ashes. Boyon is most commonly known for it being referenced in a piece of national propaganda against the empire, which reinforces the hatred the nation feels against its enemy, the empire. It is also interesting to consider that the name Boyon is inspired from an old Russian folktale of a mystical city hidden at the center of a lake. Is an island rumored to be home to many various Russian gods, as well as in some myths being the source of weather and winds, as well as a hiding place for the immortality of one specific Russian god. Next up we have Vignetia. Vignetia is the second inhabited planet in the solar system, the homeworld of humanity, and a planet that has been buried beneath the waves. It holds vital importance in large amounts of lore of the game. But here's some general information. Vignetta is depicted on a piece of national propaganda which states Cradle of Humanity Vignetta with some images depicting the planet. Interacting with the orrery, Elster states, the ocean world ravaged by war. I can still hear the sounds of the sea, implying either Elster or some of her distalt memories originate from this location. Vignetta is also written about by the Dreamer who states the following. As the storm raged in the sky, I fell from a ruined skyscraper on Vignetta, but I never reached the ocean below. I kept falling, when suddenly, lightning struck the building and I woke up. The Battle of Vignetia, or the Vignetian War, is a major event within the lore of Signalis and on this planet. Vignetia was once a sprawling planet filled with cities that was the primary planet of humanity. However, a major war between the nation and the empire utterly destroyed the entire planet and submerged most of these cities beneath the waves. While no dialogue directly tells us about this lost conflict, during the process of regaining the distalt memories, Elster can see several images from this lost conflict, which can give us slight insight into this event. To begin, we see an image of a trench filled with fallen replica units, hedgehogs, and the Yusan national flag, showcasing just how violent and escalated the fighting reached, also showing that the type of conflict and battles that were occurring in this war were very similar to trench warfare. Then we see an image of what is clearly a nuclear detonation, symbolizing that the conflict reached its end, likely due to heavy nuclear discharge that had, in the process, decimated the population of the planet, and most likely escalated the issues of the flooding on the planet. Finally, we see a woman standing before flooded train tracks. While the scene's meaning isn't known, it is known that this is the same woman who watched the nuclear detonation, and it could be used to infer that the flooding happened rather quickly. It also should be really noted, we also don't know who this woman is at this point in time. Aside from the distalt memories, there is also one of the most important photos of the game. The distinct photo of Alanya is actually a photo of the division from this war, specifically the People's Army 5th Vignettian Infantry Division, Unit 12. And this is the division that Alanya served in, as well as many other important characters in the war. The conflict concluded with the nation actually winning back control of Vignettia, However, in reclaiming humanity's homeworld, they reconquered a shattered planet, isolated from the rest of the system, as expressed by the fact that the Empire continues to blockade the planet, preventing supplies and repair from occurring. Uh, the nation also apparently has artillery divisions that are on this flooded world, that are being used to bombard Boyon and Kiziet, and most likely also the Imperial Fleet. There are also several Russian myths that connect to Vignette. All of them portray the Vignettians as having an excessive, voluptuous, or blasphemous way of life, and then being punished in a flood that took the city to the bottom of the Baltic Sea. This name connects to the game that humanity's destruction of its own homeworld is a punishment for its own arrogance in war and society in general. From this watery world, we can turn to the next planet in our system, Kizyeth. This imperial planet, dominated by the signature Red Deserts, is noted on the ornery by Elster as the Red Desert. The Imperial fleet can only hold it for so long before it will be liberated. It is also depicted in a piece of national propaganda where it is stated as a liberation objective of the nation. And it is mentioned by the Dreamer in the Dream Diary, with the Dreamer stating the following. I dreamt I was an Imperial farmer. I embraced my lover in the red deserts of Kidzieth when a storm consumed us, the sand grinding us down until nothing remained. 
is also mentioned as being a location where the Imperial fleet is of particular strength, allowing them to blockade the repair of Vignetia. Kizyet in mythology is also something, an illusion that should be used to understand a bit more about the planet. Um, it is a legendary and mythical city with, in Russian folktale. Uh, the legend goes that as the city was about to be taken by Mongolian invaders, the inhabitants prayed for salvation, and a flood encircled the city, protecting them and keeping the invaders out. From here, we can go to Haimat. Haimat is a moon orbiting the fifth planet in the solar system, a gas giant. It is the fifth inhabited body in the solar system, and the new capital of the nation, the Yusan nation. Some general lore about it is we can interact on the orderly table with it, where Elsa remarks the following, Haimat home of the new nation's government. I hear the view of the gas giant rings are beautiful there. Haimat is the only inhabited planet not mentioned by the dreamer in the dream diary, which does raise some questions that I currently don't have the answers to. Haimat is depicted on a piece of national propaganda where it is called the heart of the revolution um, because it is the capital of the Yusan nation. These are all the planets I'm going to cover today. As Wen and Rotfront really do need videos of their own, and it, to include them here would just not really work. I need more time to work on them. However, before I finish, I do want to cover a theory that practically should be considered part of the lore with how heavily the evidence supports it. And this theory states that the game takes place within our own solar system, just in an alternate reality. To start, Boyon is representative of the planet of Venus. This is supported by the planet's deadly gas atmosphere, which would make habitation only possible within its orbit, something that would possibly be true on actual Venus, seeing as Venus is a very a volcanic planet with lots of poisonous gases in its uh, atmosphere. Vignette is representative of the planet of Earth. This is supported by it being the homeworld of humanity and being between Boyon and Kizyet. The flooded appearance of the world could be due to global heating as a result of industrialization and the war melting the ice caps. It's also the only planet with native water on it, which is something that Earth is known for. It should also be noted that this would be the homeworld of the Yusan nation, which has a name indicating a Europe and Asian or Eurasian Union or Yusan, tying it even greater to being an alternate Earth. Tzitzit is clearly representative of the planet of Mars. It is a planet of red sands. Mars is often known as a red, like tightener, the other words. It's often described to you as a red planet. Um, and it's between Vignetia and further planets, which, you know, has its having the same uh, orientation within our solar system as it does in reality. Hymet is representative of Saturn's moon of Titan. This is supported by the yellowish colorization within the propaganda and by the note that we can see gas giant rings from Hymet. And those would likely be Saturn's distinctive rings that Saturn is very well known for. Right front is Europa. Uh, because Europa is very well known for being a possible colonization planet, and Lang being the small little cold dot far away from everything else, is um, believed to have been representative of Pluto. I think this theory really should be considered as factual lore at this point in time. It is so heavily established and referenced and just really just works 100%. Um, within the game, I think it's something that's beyond just being a little bit of a reference. Um, I do want to mention here, while using data mine content is not allowed in theory at all, and I think it's something we should not do at all, it is worth mentioning that there are several cutscenes within the game that refer to things as Jupiter, which should, you know, add a little bit of, you know, maybe we should consider this uh, beyond just the actual evidence that's in the game that, that I think clearly proves this. But with that, I've now covered the basics on the lore of all the minor planets in Signalis. I have to come back to Rot Front and Wang independently, and I'm sorry about not being able to fit it in this video. However, I hope this was interesting and helpful in understanding exactly what's going on elsewhere in the solar system, and even in understanding the you know, solar system conflict between the Yusan Nation and the Empire, as where they stand, what they control, and what the planets they control are like. If you like this type of content, feel free to subscribe or to join either my main Discord linked below, VSL, the unofficial Signalis Discord, or the r Signalis Discord all of which are linked below. There are awesome places. You're going to find lots of people to talk about Signalis lore and just talk about Signalis in general too. But for today, this is all I've got. This has been Chris Revised, and I hope to see you all, well, next time.